Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. If you are following our family over Vlogmas 2021, you know that we did a fun mystery sew along during all those videos and each day I gave you a little bit of a snippet of a mystery project. Well, we're all done with that project now and I've had quite a few requests to put it all into one video so that you had the tutorial kind of all in one place where it was more easy to reference. And I also did the pattern in a PDF for you guys. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We are gonna be making this Joy pillow. Now, this was such a fun sew along and I made mine into a pillow, but towards the end of the video, you'll see how you can make it into either a pillow like I did. You can also make it into a mini wall hanging or even a table topper. So I do have a few different ways to finish this pattern at the end of the video to make it even more fun, but let's go ahead and jump right in and I'll show you how to make the Joy pillow. And welcome to our Vlogmas sew along. This is gonna be so fun and this is gonna be a nice easy project. So if you're not sure you can do it, um, please don't be afraid. We're gonna take it step by step. We're gonna do just a little bit each day and it's gonna be so much fun. You can totally do it. Today is gonna be the first day and I just want to go over some supplies so that you can have everything handy and then we'll start sewing tomorrow. So the first thing you're gonna need is just basic sewing supplies. So you're gonna need your iron. I'm gonna suggest this 505 temporary adhesive um, just for basting our project, but you can also use pins so you don't have to have this. You're also just gonna want like a ruler and a rotary cutter um, and maybe some pins or wonder clips, just the standard sewing supplies. You're also gonna need some batting and for this project, you're gonna need a piece of batting that's 26 inches by 26 inches. You're gonna need one half of a yard of background fabric and I'm just gonna be using this white. This is my standard um, Moda solid. It's 9900-97. You're gonna need some backing fabric and for this project, you're gonna need one yard of backing fabric. You're also gonna need some fun ribbon. This is just a 3 8 inch wide ribbon and I just chose this black and white gingham because it's cute. You're only gonna need eight inches of it so chances are you may have something like this already in your stash. And then you're gonna need four different colors of fabric. Now I have fat quarters here but you can get away with a fat eighth of each color and actually some of the pieces in this are really small. The black for example is actually very, very small and you could totally get away with probably something from your scraps. Dash. The green you're probably gonna want your full fat eighth of, and then the pink and the red are actually gonna be two pieces um, that are no, no larger than eight inches each. So if you have a fat eighth or even an eight inch scrap in your stash, you're gonna be good to go. Hey guys, welcome to day one of our sew along. So today is gonna be really easy and this is gonna be so cute. So we're gonna need our red fabric and our pink fabric today. And we're just gonna be cutting out a couple of squares. These are gonna be six and a half inches each. And because this is folded, I am gonna just press a little section really quick so that I don't have folds in it. And I told you I had a bigger chunk of fabric here, so you really, if you have just a small scrap of each of these colors, you don't even need your full fat eighth. So I'm just gonna line them up together, haphazardly. <laughs> and I do have a salvage edge down here, so I'm just gonna leave that sticking out a little bit. And I need a six and a half inch square. So I'm gonna just take my ruler and I'm gonna just place it, here's my six and a half inch line here. So from here to here. So I'm just gonna place it so I have enough fabric around to make sure I can get a nice full cut and then I can kind of get rid of those and then I can turn these around and then finish squaring it up. Okay, so I've got two pieces here. So now I'm gonna take these and just layer them right sides together, just like this. And I'm gonna sew around all four sides using a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, so I've sewn around all four sides and now we're just gonna cut this in half diagonally from corner to corner, both directions. Trim and then turn it and trim the. And voila, we have four cute little half square triangles and I'm gonna press them all towards the red. So I just set the seam like that and then press. And then I just kind of stack them up like this we're just gonna press them all. Okay. 
So here are our half square triangles and next we need to trim them down and we're going to trim them down to four inches by four inches. Now you can use this regular rule, ruler if you like and just put it on there and trim it down. I actually like to use square rulers when I am doing half square triangles. So you can either use a square ruler you have or these block lock rulers are super cool too um, because you can just place your seam allowance right inside Hopefully you can see that, but there's a divot right down the middle of this ruler and so it's really cool. You actually just place your seam allowance right inside there and it actually kind of locks in place and then you can trim your ruler, your square. Here is my four inch line. I'm just making sure I have enough on all the sides. So I'm going to cut off those two sides and then I actually can just slide this down and I actually want to turn my thing around so I can trim without cutting myself. So I'm just going to line those up like that, slipped a little, and there we go, and then you have a perfect half square triangle. Okay, if you don't have one of these block rock lock rulers, they're super cool, uh, but if you don't have one, you can just use your regular ruler, and most rulers have this diagonal line along them right here, so I like to just line that right up with the seam line of my block. And then I can see my lines right here for four inches. Make sure I have enough fabric on all four sides. And then I can turn it around and trim it the other way. I'm just making sure everything is straight. All right, so however you can do it, go ahead and just trim these up to four inches square. So here we have our four blocks. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sew these together in what is called a pinwheel. And so you basically just alternate your colors by turning the blocks so that your colors are always touching the opposite color. So I've got a red touching a pink, red, pink, red, pink, red, pink. And so that gives you a cute little pinwheel shape in the middle of your block. So to sew this together, we're just gonna take this right side and lay it right down on side, top of the left side, and if you pressed both of them to the um, red, then this seam right here, you'll be able to feel it, and it's just gonna nest nicely, okay? So I'm gonna flip that one and flip this one. We'll take it over to the machine, and we're gonna sew down this edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm not gonna break my thread in the middle. That way my blocks won't get twisted or turned when I go to sew the rows together. All right, so here they are, and they're still together, and I'm not gonna cut them apart, that way I know they're gonna stay in the right way, but I'm gonna take them over to my sewing machine, and I'm gonna put one to the right and one to the left, and I'm just going to press that seam, or not my sewing machine, my ironing board, um, and then I'm gonna take this one and fold it to the left, like so, and then we'll take this one and fold it to the right, and now I'm gonna take this and flip it down on top, and we're going to sew along this edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I know you've probably seen me do this a million times, but now you can see this seam is going to the left and this seam is going to the right. And so they're gonna just nest together nicely and that's gonna give us a really nice point there in the middle. I'm gonna pin right there in the middle. And if you wanna pin on your ends, you can. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna take it over and sew. press and we're going to press it open and you can press your seams open or you can press to one side for this project I'm just going to press to one side because uh, there's not too many seams right here I feel like it's nice um, and flat so now we need to just trim this block up it needs to be seven and a half by seven and a half and I don't have a seven and a half by seven and a half inch ruler so I'm going to go ahead and just use my big one you can also use the lines on your um, cutting mat as well if you have one of those. And this actually looks really good. This is what happens when you kind of square up your blocks as you go. I mean, I'm barely trimming off anything there. You do want to do this step though because then everything just matches up nicely. Okay, so today we're gonna be just snowballing the corners of our cute little um, pinwheel here. So we're gonna take some of our background fabric and I'm just gonna set my pinwheel aside. I've got some background fabric here, and we just need to cut off some two and a half inch squares. Um, so just to make my life a little bit easier, and we are gonna be using this later, I'm actually gonna cut a two and a half inch strip from my fabric, that way I can cut some things from it, and I can also use it later on. So the first thing you wanna do is kind of 
this side is kind of rough. Um, and so I'm just gonna clear that up. So I'm just lining up a line right here with the bottom of my ruler. And I'm just gonna straighten up that edge. So now when I'm moving forward, I just know that I have a nice straight edge. And I'm gonna scoot it over to my two and a half inch line. And I'm just gonna cut that off. And I can set my background fabric aside for right now. And for this particular step, we're gonna need four two and a half inch squares. So I'm just gonna line up my fabric like this. And this side is now, by the way, um, not straight because I didn't do that one yet. So I'm just gonna straighten up that edge. And then I'm just gonna cut four two and a half inch squares. And I've got two layers here, so I've got two and four. Now, I don't wanna do anything with this. I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. We'll use that a little bit later. So don't throw away any of your scraps as we're going. Okay, so here's our four squares and here is our pinwheel. And we're gonna just snowball the corners of this pinwheel. So what you wanna do is either draw a line, diagonal line from corner to corner on the wrong side of all these squares. And I just use these friction markers or I'll show you what I actually do once we get over to my machine. So you can draw a line like that on the corner of all of them. I'm always lazy and I don't wanna do that. And by the way, these friction erasable pins come off with heat. So you can see that line right there if I press it, it's miraculously gone. So we're gonna take all four of our squares and I'm just gonna place one on each corner, just lining up the raw edges. And I'm gonna go ahead and just pin these in place. That way I can just take them all over at the same time. Next, we're gonna take this to the sewing machine and we're just gonna sew from quarter to corner on all four pieces. And I'm gonna use the diagonal seam tape on my machine, so I'll show you that when we get over there. So here is my diagonal seam tape, and it's actually getting kind of worn out, but this stuff is perfect. I use it for pretty much um, all of my lines now. I don't ever draw lines anymore. And I'll put a link below where you can get this. But we're just gonna take that and I just line up the corner with my needle, and then I'm gonna line up this other corner with this red line right here. And I usually take a couple stitches and then I can kind of turn this to make sure it's lined right up on that line. And now I can just turn it and I can just do all four really quick. All right, there we go, where they're all nice and sewn. And I actually like to press these before you cut them, but you can do whatever you want. We're going to trim one quarter of an inch away from that stitch line. But I don't know why, I just find that it kind of works better if I press first. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press back these corners. Now make sure that you fold that back before you trim it off, and we're just gonna trim a quarter of an inch away from our edge or from our stitch line. Okay, super cute. And then we're gonna just square this up one more time. So this whole thing was seven and a half inches the first time around. We're actually gonna square it up again. And I always square up my blocks when I do um, these snowballed corners because the corners can just get a little wonky, so. See, you can see down here I've got some going off. So I'm just gonna line up my lines along these seams. You can line up this seam. And then we're just gonna retrim this to seven and a half inches square. So today we're gonna be using some of our white fabric and our black fabric. And I actually went ahead and just grabbed a piece of black from my stash because you'll see this piece is so small, I didn't even feel like cutting um, apart the fat eighth or fat quarter that I showed at the beginning of this. So I just grabbed a piece from my stash. All right, and then we need some white fabric, but let's go ahead and trim our black piece first. By the way, you could also use gray for this. I think that would be super cute if you don't have black. Um, I would just have it match the ribbon that you have. So one and a half by two and a half. This can go back in my scrap bin. And I'm just gonna set that aside. 
And then for our white fabric, I'm not gonna recut the scraps we cut the other day because I do have some other pieces that are gonna be a similar size. So I'm just gonna cut new pieces. So I'm just gonna cut a one and a half inch strip. You're also gonna cut two pieces that are one and a half inches by seven and a half inches. So here's my two pieces. And then I also need two pieces that are four by one and a half. So let's see if we can get a four out of this. So there's one. And because I have another piece that's gonna be one and a half, I'm actually gonna cut another strip of one and a half off of this. Okay, we can set that aside. And I need a strip. Again, that is four. Okay. So we've got two pieces that are one and a half by four, one black piece that is one and a half by two and a half. And then we've got two pieces that are one and a half by seven and a half. And then this little one and a half inch scrap, I'm going to stick with my other scraps up there and hang on to those, don't get rid of anything. So we're gonna start by sewing our black piece in between two of our four inch strips. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take this to my sewing machine and just sew these together using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I just place them right sides together over here at the machine. You can pin if you want, but this is a small enough piece that I don't bother. Okay, and then I'm just gonna fold it back right here at the machine and just kind of finger press it and then add the other piece. Okay, so here we are. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just press this. And I'm gonna press towards the dark fabric just because I always press towards the dark unless I need to press a different direction to make my seams nest. And I'll go ahead and press it from the back side and a little bit from the front. And I'm just gonna go ahead and let that cool right there. While that's cooling, I'm gonna take my two strips that are seven and a half inches and I'm gonna sew one to either side of our pinwheel unit using a quarter inch seam allowance. And you're welcome to pin these. I actually just kind of bring them over here and sew. Okay, and here we are. And now we just need to press these. So I'm just gonna press it like so and just flip those out. And for this one, I'm not gonna press towards the dark. It's just easier to press towards the side with less seams. So my rule of thumb is press towards the dark, press the direction I need it to go to nest, or press towards the side with the least amount of seams. Okay, so we have this done. Now we're gonna sew our black strip to the top. So we're just gonna put it right sides together. And for this one, you might, just to make sure that everything kind of stays, you might wanna just pin it on the edges. So I'll usually pin on the edges and then maybe one right in the middle. Okay, so now we're gonna sew one quarter of an inch. All right, and so here we are. You can kind of see something starting to take shape, but hopefully it's still a mystery. And we need to trim it up a little bit. We're gonna trim this to nine and a half by eight and a half. So eight and a half tall, nine and a half wide. And we're just barely cutting off just a little bit here, so it'll be worth it. So today we are going to be needing some of our white background fabric. We're also gonna be needing our ribbon and this day is gonna be super easy and fast. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set this out of the way so I don't accidentally cut my piece. And then for our ribbon, we're just gonna cut off a piece that's eight inches long and I'm just gonna, um, this does not have to be perfect by the way, so I'm just gonna eyeball it on my cutting board. And then I've just got this little bit hanging over. I'm gonna leave that. And this is gonna be plenty of ribbon, okay? So we're gonna set that aside. Just make sure one end is straight. I don't care about that end because we're gonna handle that later. All right, we also need two pieces of white fabric. And so one is gonna be four and a half by nine and a half, and one is gonna be three and a half by nine and a half. And so how I'm gonna do that, is I'm gonna look at my piece here and, ooh, that's so close. I think I'm gonna do it. Um, so I've got nine and a half this way. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. This is gonna be just a little bit short, but it's okay. I'm gonna cut it at four and a half inches. And then I'm gonna open it up. This is how I, like I try and maximize my fabric. I don't know if you guys do this, but I do not mess around when I'm, hopefully I have enough here. Okay, so we've got nine and a half by four and a half. I'm gonna line that up and trim that off. Okay, so we've got that piece. And then I need one that is three and a half by nine and a half. So here's my nine and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my scraps. All right, so now we've got our two pieces and we've got our ribbon. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is take the larger piece, so the four and a half inch piece and our ribbon, and we're going to find the center of the four and a half inch piece. So just, I mean, you can measure if you want. I actually just fold it in half and make a little crease. And then I'm gonna place the flat end of my ribbon right on there, and I'm just gonna pin it in place so I can take it to my sewing machine. And then we're just gonna stitch right along this edge just a couple times just to secure this. Okay, super easy. So now this part's just kind of dangling and it's just attached right here. Okay, so now we're gonna grab our bobble. It's, it's an ornament, we're just gonna spill the beans now. Um, and we're gonna sew the piece with the ribbon to the top and then the smaller piece to the bottom. So I'm just gonna place this right sides down pin that in place and I'll go ahead and pin this one just because I kind of cut this piece a little bit short and I want to make sure that's exactly where I want it. Okay, so I'm going to pin that one. We'll sew that one a quarter of an inch, but at the same time, I'm just going to bring this one over as well. And you're going to want to stitch along and just make sure that this ribbon is loose and not, you know, tangled up in your seam allowance or anything. You want it nice and straight. So I'm going to go ahead and just pin it so everything stays. And we're going to take this to our sewing machine and sew right across that edge and this edge one quarter of an inch, making sure we don't sew over our ribbon down here. I'm just gonna press it forward and press this. Okay, and then if you need to trim this so your edges are straight, please do so. It should be nine and a half inches wide this way. And what is it this way? Um, about 15 and a half inches tall. Okay, and this is still just free flowing. So just leave this like this for now. So we're gonna go ahead and take our ornament piece. And we're just gonna set it aside. Remember your ribbon is just free flowing there and that's what it needs to be. So I'm gonna just set this piece aside. Today we're gonna be working with our green fabric and our white background fabric. And we're gonna need a few pieces today. So. So I'm gonna bring out my labeling pieces. You don't have to do this. You could use sticky notes or just keep them organized, but you're gonna need six of them. And we're gonna go ahead and start cutting. Because this is folded up, I am going to just kind of press it really quick here. I'm gonna need several pieces that are two inches. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut off a piece off the side here that's two. And then we can cut it down into what we need. Okay, so our first piece is gonna need to be uh, 14 inches. Okay, sorry I cut that off screen, but my <laughs> ruler isn't long enough. So I have a piece that is two by inches by 14 inches. We'll just make that piece A. Cut another piece that's two inches wide. We're gonna need several two inch wide pieces, so. All right, we need one piece that is two by five. And I'm gonna grab my smaller ruler so I'm not hitting my ironing board, but you can use whatever you have. Okay, so we'll call that piece B. And then I need a piece that is four and a half. And since these are only half inch off, don't get them mixed up. So A, B, C. All right, this we can put aside, don't throw it away. Again, you're gonna be needing some more pieces that are this size. That's all we're gonna need for green today. The next ones are going to be our white. Next, we're gonna need a piece that is three and a half inches by 10 inches. I'm just gonna fold that up and we'll make that piece D. I also need a piece that is two by four and a half. I'm gonna grab one of my scraps from the other day. Remember how I said we're gonna need some other pieces that are this size? So I'm gonna grab this and it's two by four and a half. So here's my four and a half. This one's two and a half, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it down to two. Okay, that can be piece E. And then I need two pieces that are two by two. So here's four inches by two. 
And then I can just cut this off. And now I have two pieces that are two by two. And we'll make those piece F, all right? The rest of this stuff I'm gonna throw over into my scraps. Okay, so for the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our two F pieces or two by two squares and our P, um, piece that's a little bit longer, so our B piece. And we're gonna place these right on this corner here. And we're gonna sew diagonally going this way on these. And now we just need to press these back. So I'm gonna go ahead and just press them and then I'll trim them kind of like our last one. And then I just grab my ruler. And when you're trimming these seams off, they don't have to be absolutely perfect because they're just in your seam allowance. Okay, so now we have this piece and I am going to just retrim this piece up. So this piece was two by five. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim it up because my corners got a little bit wonky and that's totally fine. I just wanna make sure it's the right size so that when we sew everything else together, it'll fit. Okay, so that piece is done. We can set that piece aside. The next thing we're gonna do is take our C and E pieces and we are going to just sew those together. And then we're just gonna press. And for this one, I am gonna to press towards the dark because this green is really dark Next, we're gonna take our D piece. We're actually gonna sew it to the top and make sure that your green is on the left side and your right is on the white side, okay? So we're just gonna place those right side together and sew right here, one quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna go ahead for this one and just press up towards the solid piece. All right, and then next we can take our A piece and we're just gonna sew that right to the right side of this and make sure that again, your green piece is to the left side. So this green piece is touching white, if that makes sense. And I'm gonna press this towards the green or the darker print, whatever color you choose. You don't have to choose my own colors, by the way. You can make them any color you like. All right, and then next we're gonna take this little bit and we're gonna sew it to the bottom down here. So make sure that you're sewing it to the side that has both the greens on it. Okay, and here we are. And I'm probably going to, actually kind of wants to go that way. So I'm just gonna let my fabric decide and press it down towards the snowballed piece, okay? And I will press that on the back side. And I'm also just gonna give it a press on the front side as well. Okay, and then now we just wanna trim this up. This should be five inches wide by about 15 and a half inches tall. Hey guys, and welcome back to today's Sew Along. So today we're gonna to need our green fabric and our white fabric. And so I'm gonna just set the green aside. I also grabbed one of my scraps from yesterday and we're gonna cut our white fabric first. Now I've got a couple of long pieces that I need and I want to make sure that I have enough fabric for them. So we're gonna go, um, I said you needed a half of a yard of fabric. So this is the 18 inch side right here. And we're gonna cut off two pieces from that that are one and a half by 15 and a half inches. So I've got 18 inches this way. It's actually folded in half. I'm gonna fold it in half one more time only so I can fit it on my screen here. So this is my 18 inch side. And from that, we're gonna cut, like I said, two pieces that are one and a half. And if you need to, you can straighten up this side. Mine's pretty straight, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna set that aside. And now these need to be one and a half by 15 and a half. So I'm just gonna open them up. Okay, so these two pieces we can just set aside and those are going to be pieces, we'll just call those pieces A. Actually, we're gonna call these pieces B. Okay, the next thing we need are two pieces that are three inches by 20 and a half. So that is why I want to make sure we don't run out, okay? So here is the longer side now, and now we're gonna cut those. We're gonna cut two of them that are three inches by 20 and a half. And this is actually a little bit off, so I will straighten that up. And as you can see, my edges are all wonky, so we're gonna trim that up. So however you can get 
your three inches by 20 and a half. Probably should have had you cut that on day one so that you didn't have to worry about this, but it's a mystery. Okay, so three and a, three inches. And then we just need two pieces that are 20 and a half and I'm just gonna have to do that down here on my cutting board because obviously I can't fit that on there. Okay, so we're gonna call these piece A. These are our three inches by 20 and a half inches. I wanted to get them cut out today before you start getting low on white fabric. So cut these first and then cut your B's. Um, and then the next thing that we're gonna need for today, and I'm gonna grab some of our scraps for this one because we need some two inch strips. I need two pieces that are two inches by two inches. So again, I'm going to cut a two inch strip and then just cut that into two by two. So we've got these, we'll call those piece C. We need one piece that is two by four and a half. We're gonna call that uh, D. And then I need two pieces that are two inches by 10 and a half, so that's not gonna be enough, so we'll just set that aside like that. And we need a piece that is two by 10 and a half. We need two pieces. Okay, so we've got two pieces. We'll put that E. We're actually gonna need one more marker today. I think that's it for the white. Now we need some green. So we are going to need two pieces that are two by five and a half. So I'm gonna grab my one of my scraps here and it's two by five and a half. I'm gonna need two of them. I can only get one out of this, but that's okay. I just try and kind of maximize my fabric as best as I can. So I'm gonna cut out another two inch strip. Okay, so here's my two five and a half inch pieces. We'll call those G. And then I need one piece that is two by 11 and a half. And then this is too small, so we'll throw that in the trash. Okay, so this will be piece F. So we're gonna set piece F aside. We're gonna take piece G and piece C. We're gonna place both piece G's like this. We're gonna place a piece C on the bottom of both. And we're gonna sew from corner to corner, going from the outside into the inside. So this way. Okay, and then we just need to press these. And kind of like the other ones, I actually like to just press them and then cut them, but um, you can do whatever works better for you. Okay, so now we've got these pieces sewn. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take these E strips and we're gonna sew one to the bottom of each of these. So the white is gonna be touching the white. Okay, and then for these, I'm just gonna press towards the white because it has the least amount of seams. Okay, and while those are cooling, we're gonna take our piece F and our piece D, and we're just gonna sew those on one end. It doesn't matter which one. Okay, and then for this one, I'm gonna sew or press towards the green. Now we're gonna take, get these out of the way. Um, like I said, the B's and A's can just uh, be set aside for right now, so don't worry about those. Just wanted to get them cut. Um, and now we're going to sew these three pieces together just like this. So make sure that your points come down towards the center. And for these, you can um, pin them if you like. And then I am gonna go ahead and just press this side just since these are kind of skinny and I want to be able to get a nice flat piece. So I'm not gonna do a great pressing job, just enough to get it flat so that I can add this piece. And again, I'm actually gonna press this towards this center strip just so that, just because the seams aren't diagonal on this one. And I just kinda will give it a little tug. And we'll turn it over and we'll press it from the front. And then just like the other one we did yesterday, we're gonna wanna trim this to five by 15 and a half.
Okay guys, I think you've kind of figured out what we're doing here. So today is the day we're gonna be putting some things together. So we're gonna take our bobble ornament that we created and we still have our ribbon kind of hanging. We're gonna sew the J to the left side and the Y to the right side. And so this is just gonna be super easy. We're just gonna lay those right down. And if you like, you can put a couple pins in. I'm just gonna do the same thing we've been doing all along and I'll pin at one end or both ends, sorry. And then maybe somewhere in the middle. I'm gonna do that for this one as well. Now for these, just be careful that you are not sewing over that ribbon yet. We're not ready to attach that yet. So just keep an eye out for that. So we're gonna take this to our machine and just sew down both sides using a one quarter of an inch seam allowance. Just being careful we're not sewing over the ribbon. And here we are, and then we just wanna press these. And I'm probably gonna press, I think I'm gonna try and press out. So first I'm just gonna lay that seam flat like that and so that I can just set the seam. And then let's go ahead and try and press that direction and see what happens. Okay, worked pretty good. Do the same thing on this side. And so then I'll just press out. Doesn't really matter. Whichever way you wanna press is fine. So we're gonna take our B squares. These are the one and a half inch squares and we're gonna sew those to the right and left sides of our block. And then we're gonna take our A squares and we're going, or strips, sorry. And we're gonna sew those to the top. And these are our three inch by 20 and a half inch strips, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Now, since these are such long strips, I'll probably go ahead and just pin at the top and bottom. And you wanna add your side strips first and then your top and bottom strips. Hopefully that makes sense. Just go ahead and press this. And I'm just pressing towards this kind of solid piece now because there's no seams on it and it'll just go a little bit easier. And then now we're going to sew our A rectangles to the top and bottom. And again, I'm just going to pin them. And I am gonna backstitch at the stop and start of here just because we're kind of nearing the end. So here we are, we're almost done. Now we're gonna go ahead and take this ribbon and I'm just going to make sure that it looks nice and straight right up the middle. And I'm just gonna sew right along both side edges with just as close as I can to the edge of that ribbon um, just to secure it in place now. Okay, so I'm just gonna put a couple of pins in here just so that it stays straight while I'm sewing. And I am just really going right on the very edge of this ribbon. Okay, here we are. And then our last step will just be to clip off any threads there. And then I just need to chop off my extra ribbon. Okay, so here we are. Go ahead and trim this up to 20 and a half by 20 and a half inches. And I will meet you back here in the next video. So today we're gonna be using our little joy top that we've created. We're also gonna be using our batting. And then I'm gonna use some um, 505 basting spray, but you can totally use um, pins if you don't have this or if you just prefer pins. And we are going to be basting and quilting this cute little block that we've made to our batting. Now, the finished block is 20 and a half by 20 and a half. And I said you needed a 26 by 26 piece of batting, which is really nice and big. And I said that at the beginning because I have two ways, actually three ways we can finish this based on what you wanna do. So the first way is you can just leave it like this 
You can um, baste it normally with some backing, batting, and the top, quilt it, and then bind it just like you would a normal quilt, and use this as like a little table topper or something like um, a little mini wall hanging. That would be super cute. The second option would be to add some um, patchwork border to this. And if you want to do the patchwork border, you're gonna need 44 two and a half inch squares. You should have enough of these fabrics left over to do that. So I would just cut out a variety of the colors. And you're gonna make two strips that are 10 squares long and two strips that are 12 squares long. And then you'll sew those together just like normal using a quarter inch seam allowance. You'll sew the 10 square strips to the sides and then you'll add the two strips that are 12 squares to the top and bottom. And then you can baste and bind it normally as well and use that as a little bit of a larger table topper or mini quilt. Um, I just thought I'd throw the patchwork option out because you, I know you have some extra fabric left over and I just thought it would be a really cute alternative. Then we have option number three, which is what we're gonna be doing in the videos, what I'm gonna be doing. And we're gonna turn this into a pillow. And so in order to do that, I'm just gonna leave as is. I'm not gonna add any extras. I'm going to just baste our top to our bind, um, batting. And then I'll show you how to create the pillow backing. And I just think it will be so cute. And I've actually cut my batting down to 24 by 24 because I don't need it quite as large. I just wanted you to have enough at the beginning of this to do the little patchwork border if you want. And I think that would be so cute. So I just centered it on here. And I'm gonna pick off any dark colored threads because those will show through on my white. And then I'm just gonna spray. And I'm trying not to get it on the other, the front over there, just enough to hold this in place basically while I'm quilting it. By the way, if you're spray basting, I suggest having a window open or you could wear your mask. We all have those masks now. <laughs> Very handy for spray basting. Okay, and so that's easy as that. Now, if you wanna pin baste, you can definitely do that. Now I'm just gonna take this over to my sewing machine and I'm just gonna do some fun quilting on it. And I think I'll do some free motion quilting on this one just so I can kind of show you how to do it. So let's go ahead and head over to my machine and we'll get this all nice and quilted up. Okay, so here is my finished quilt top and I just did this fun little meander. Hopefully you can kind of see it on there. And when I'm doing that, I don't usually have a plan. I just kind of go for it and just go wherever my machine takes me. I do try not to cross over my threads, but that's kind of like my only rule. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and just trim this up. And so I'm just gonna get one of my larger square rulers. And I do like using square rulers to trim up my quilt blocks because um, I feel like, you know, that gives me a perfect square, whereas some of the, the skinnier rules, rulers, I mean, you can do it, but I just think it's just easier this way. So we're gonna trim this up to 20 and a half and 20 and a half. And I just go across until I run out. And then I'll go ahead and scoot this over and get to this next corner. And I just kind of keep those sides lined up. Okay, and then I'll just turn it around and we'll do this other side. And I'm just lining up my ruler with the edge of my fabric and just trying to make sure that I have it all on there. Um, you can also line up one of your rulers with a seam line just to kind of make sure it's straight. Whatever you can do to kind of make it as easy as possible is fine. That's what I get for cutting backwards. Okay. 
right, and here we go. We have our top and it's just got batting on the back. And when I do pillows like this, I just leave batting on the back because um, I just don't feel like it's worth it to waste a piece of fabric on here. If you wanted to, you could have put fabric on the back of here so that you had fabric on the inside of your pillow, but I've just never really felt the need and nobody's ever gonna see that, so it seems like a waste to me. But you can, of course, do what you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set this aside for now. We're gonna work on our pillow backing. So here is some backing fabric and you're gonna cut it two pieces that are 20 and a half inches tall by 14 inches wide. And these need to be pressed. So I'm gonna do that really quick. I have a couple of seams that are being a pain, so I'm actually just gonna squirt it with some of my best press. This stuff is awesome, by the way. Um, I love it. It's perfect if you're working on something with small pieces. Um, it really gives your fabric a little bit of body, but it's not quite as harsh as regular starch. It also smells really good. This lavender one is my favorite. All right, so we have these two pieces here, and I'm gonna go ahead and take one of the pieces off and just set it aside. And if you have a directional fabric, you are gonna wanna make sure that you're paying attention to which side it goes. Mine is directional, this is the up. I have it turned sideways so that you can see it on the camera, but this is the top of my fabric. So I'm gonna make sure to fold in this um, right edge on one of them, and then on the other piece, I'll fold in the left edge. That way they're both going the right direction. So just make sure you're kind of paying attention to that. So what we're gonna do is lay our piece right side down, and we're gonna fold it in about one inch and press all the way down and then we're gonna fold it another inch in and press. And one of the tools I wanted to show you is this cute little, this is a clover um, pressing ruler. I think it's called a hot, hot ruler or something like that. Um, I'll try and link it below this video. But anyways, you can iron on this. So it's super cool and it has measurements on it here. So you can put it right on here, fold your fabric over. I kind of eyeballed an inch, so I actually did pretty good there. I was a little under, but this doesn't matter a whole lot. You don't have to be 100% um, perfect on this, but it's really cool because you can just use that and iron on it, and then you know you're getting a straight seam. Okay, so now here's my one. So I pressed it in one inch. I'm gonna press it in one more time. So technically, we're gonna lose two inches off this edge. So it used to be 14 inches this way, now it's gonna be 12. Okay, and so I'm gonna just leave this one and set it aside. You can throw a couple pins in here if you want, uh, just so that it doesn't move around on you. Okay, now, like I said before, my fabric right side up is this way, and I pressed my right edge, so this is gonna be the backing of our pillow, so up is that way, so I pressed in my right edge. So then on this one, up is this way, so we wanna press in our left edge, so that our finished edges are meeting in the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna just set this one aside, and then I'm gonna go ahead and press this one as well. So now I have both of my pieces pressed and I'm gonna take them both over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna run a stitch right along this folded edge just to hold it in place. And for pillow backings, I usually will run one on the, along this edge and then I'll run another one on this edge. I think it just looks kind of nice and it just keeps it all nice and straight. So I'm gonna do that for both of my pillow backings. And here we are. We've got both of our edges finished and they look so nice. And I do like to just give them one more press. Okay, so we've got our pillow backing or front done, and then we've got our backings done. Now, the only other thing that you're gonna need if you want to do a pillow is a pillow form. And this is just a fun, fluffy pillow form, and I will link it below. I just got it on Amazon, but you can get these virtually anywhere. So you're gonna need a pillow form if you want to do a pillow. If you're doing a table topper, 
don't need that. Um, and we can just move on to our next step. So you have two ways to do this. You can either sew these right sides together and turn your pillow right side out when you're done and then you'll just have um, just a plain regular sewing seam kind of on the edges and you won't have any binding or anything. That's the easiest kind of one and done option or you can bind it and um, kind of like you would a normal quilt project. So I'm gonna kind of try and show you both ways um, and then you can decide what you wanna do. If you want to do the um, just sew them right sides together and flip it out and just be done, this is how you're gonna do that. You're gonna have your pillow top right side up. You're gonna take one of your pillow backings and place that right side down along one of the sides so that your finished edge is pointing towards the center and then you're lining up these outside raw edges and you just wanna make sure everything's nice and lined up. Then you're gonna place your other pillow backing on the other side, just like this. And you should have a few inch overlap right here. Um, it's about three and a half, maybe four inches, probably about four inches. I didn't trim my pillow down, so I could be off a little. Um, and then you're gonna just take this and just sew all the way around all four edges. And then you can just flip it out when you're done and bam, put your pillow form in there and you're all done. The other thing you might want to do because you will have raw edges on the inside doing it this way. You also, after you stitch around the edges, may want to just run back through your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch right along the very edges. And that'll kind of finish off those inside edges inside your pillow and you won't have, um, you know, your pillow, like the fabric fraying and things like that. Um, but since it's inside the pillow, I don't worry about it too much. I think that would be a super cute way to finish it. The other way to finish it is to bind it kind of like you would a quilt. So in that instance, you want your pillow top right side down. Then you want to place your pillow backings right side up. And again, we're gonna layer them so that all the raw edges match up. This is my finished edge. These are my raw edges. And you're gonna take your other one and do the same thing. Layer it so the raw edges are touching and your finished edge is right here towards the middle. And then now for pillows, I do like to baste them, but you don't have to. At this point, I would take this to my sewing machine and just run a basting stitch all the way around all four sides and just to hold it in place before I put the binding on. Um, I feel like that helps it from, you know, keeping things from moving around. So that's what I'm going to do. And then we'll come back and we'll prepare our binding. Alrighty, and here we are. I've sewn around all four sides. So it's just nice and secure. And then you probably saw in the video, but I forgot to mention, whenever I sew over these seams right here, I'll usually just backstitch over that where the finished edge is just a couple times just to give it a little more, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of tension on that area. So just give it a little bit more strength. And then now I'm gonna go ahead, I had my fabric on the back end up being just slightly larger than my quilt top, my pillow front. And so I'm just gonna trim that off. Okay, so we're done there. Now we're gonna go ahead and prepare our binding. So I'm just gonna set this aside. So here is some cute binding that I found. If you would like to use a binding, then you are gonna need a quarter of a yard of fabric for the binding. If you want, you can also make it scrappy just using the leftover fabric you have from the fat quarters that are required um, at the beginning. And here is my salvage edge right here. This is like a half a yard. I don't need this much. Um, but I just want to show you how to cut it. So the salvage to salvage edge is how it would come off the bolt, okay? And I'm just gonna fold it up in half this way. And then I'm gonna grab my ruler and I'm doing this mainly so I can fit it um, on camera here. You certainly don't have to fold it up, but if you have a smaller ruler, this is a super handy way to do it. And I'm just gonna line up my ruler with the fold of the fabric. I'm gonna trim off this edge just so I can have a nice straight edge to work with. And I'm gonna grab this ruler so I can fit. <laughs> my ironing board is in the way. And I'm gonna place my two and a half inch line right there on that edge. And then the next thing I need to do is just trim off these salvage edges. And I'll usually just stack everything up and just kind of trim them off. Okay, next we're gonna take all three pieces and we're just gonna sew them end to end because I know there's a lot of people out there who like to do the 
diagonal seams. Um, I find that it just kind of wastes fabric and for a project like this you really don't need it. So I'm just going to sew these end to end. So I'm going to take one piece and open it up like this and then I'll take the other piece and open that up and I'm just going to layer these ends right sides together and just sew right down this edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Then I'll grab the end of it again. This is this top strip here and I'll add this strip. And then that way I will create one big long piece that we can use for our binding. So let's go over to the sewing machine. All right, so now we've got just one big long strip of fabric that we can press. And to do my binding, I just will press it in half, wrong sides together. And I know there's like a, I haven't ever tried that um, kind of fast method for doing binding where you just pin, put pins in your um, board and just leave your iron sitting there and pull it through because I'm worried I'm gonna burn my board. <laughs> uh, but there are faster ways to do this or if you have one of those little binding makers, binding tape makers. But I'm just going old school here. When I get to this bit, the seam, I do press it open just to kind of reduce the bulk and then fold it in half and then just keep going. And I'm just going to do that all the way down my strip. So the next step is to get our pillow bound. And so I'm just going to show you really quickly on video how I do it. Um, and then we'll just be almost done. So I'm going to go ahead and start down here on the bottom. I usually start in wherever I think is going to be sort of the most inconspicuous. A side would be fine, the bottom would be fine. I usually try and avoid the top since it's a pillow and you're going to see that. So I'm going to take my binding and I'm going to center it. I'm eyeballing this so you um, can measure if you want. And I've got my raw edge lined up with my raw edge and then my folded edge is towards the center of my pillow. And I'm just going to go ahead and pin that in place for now just so that when I get to my machine it's not going to go anywhere. And then I'm actually going to start sewing down here. So this bit right here is just going to be kind of loose flowing and you'll see why when we come back around to attach it. So I'm going to back stitch in my stops and starts. I'll show you how we get around the corners and then when we come back I'll show you how we attach our binding together. Okay so here we are and I'm just going to scoot clear down here to the corner and I am going to back stitch in my stop and start. Now I'm going to stop one quarter of an inch away from my pillow edge here and I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Um, you can kind of feel where that is. And then when I get to a quarter of an inch away, I'm going to lift up my presser foot and just turn it about 45 degrees and I'm going to back stitch just to keep that in place. So now that's not going anywhere. Now we're going to turn our pillow and I'm going to take my binding edge, this loose edge. I'm going to place my finger right here and I'm going to pull my binding edge so that it's just going straight away from me. And now this raw edge of my binding is lined up with this raw edge to the right of my pillow. So I'm just going to keep my finger there. I'm going to then pull the binding towards myself so that it's just nice and straight along that edge. And now I've got this kind of little mitered corner flap here. I'm going to just place that right under my foot. I'm going to back stitch and then I'm going to keep going. So again, stop one quarter of an inch away, turn it 45 degrees and back stitch. Turn it again, place your finger, pull away from you, place your finger, pull towards you. Super easy. And by the way, when you're sewing, just make sure your pillow backing doesn't catch on your table like mine is. Okay, now we're at our last edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sew just a couple inches in, kind of like we did when we started. That's plenty. 
Okay, and we're gonna bring it back over here and I've got this rest of my tail remaining. And, oh, I think I could have got away with two strips instead of three. Okay, so now we want to just overlap this strip and this strip by one quarter of an inch. So how I like to do it is, I'll just make sure that everything, you don't want any, like, you know, bumps or slack there. So I make sure this one's nice and straight and then I overlap this one by about a quarter of an inch. I kind of mark it with my finger, but you can definitely measure it if you like. I place my mark right here on my mat. And oh, bam. Okay, so now that should be overlapping. It should be nice and tight too. And now we're gonna take these and without twisting anything, we're just going to pull them together just like this. Okay, and then we're gonna open them up. And you can pin this before you sew it just to make sure it doesn't twist or anything, but you'll know if you sewed it wrong. If you did, just pick it out, make sure your pieces are straight and sew it again. Okay, now we're gonna take this over to our machine. We're gonna sew down this uh, open edge here using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I like to fold my projects in half, especially when they're small. That way the tension is off of here. So just sew right along there to close that up. Okay, now I'm just gonna finger press this open. Um, if you have one of these handy rollers, you can do that too. And then it should just lie nice and straight with the rest and you can just finish it off. And I do backstitch and, and my stops and starts again. Okay, now we can flip our pillow over and I'll usually go ahead and kind of just pop out these corners just to make my life a little bit easier as I hit them. And you can also press this as well. I usually don't bother, so don't tell anyone. And now we're just going to make sure that it's pulled nice and tight from the front. And we're just gonna wrap it around the back. And then we're just going to sew right along this edge to attach it to the back. Now when I'm getting down here towards the end, I'll go ahead and just fold up this end. You could even put a wonder clip if you want, but you're gonna fold this end up and then fold this end over. And if you do it this way, the bulk from the front seam is on the right and the bulk from the back seam is on the back. So it kind of just separates out or distributes some of that bulk. Now I'll just take one stitch into this edge right here, pivot, and keep going. Okay, look at our cute finished project. And it's all nice and bound, and we've got our little opening on the back. It's perfect. And now, I just need to squeeze this in to here. Oh my gosh. Perfect, it's so cute. Here we go, yay. And then when you put them on your couches, the little trick is to just go with your hand at the top, and it just kind of gives it that little fun fluffy pillow look. All right, everyone, so that is the finished Joy pillow or table topper or mini wall hanging, however you choose to finish it. I think it turned out really cute. If you missed our Vlogmas 2021 series, I do encourage you to go back and check out those videos because we had a lot of fun this past holiday season and it was so much fun sharing it with all of you. Anyways, thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. If you liked it, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe and also hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the upcoming fun. Thanks so much for joining me for today's video and I will see you in the next one.